Hello and welcome to this video with Titan Node. Today we're going to be going through the migration to Arbitrum Layer 2 from Layer 1 on Mainnet. So in this video we're going to be going through a couple of steps. Um, so the first one is going to be moving ETH to Arbitrum Layer 2 first. This way we can interact with Arbitrum and our node on Layer 2 once we arrive there for things like calling reward and redeeming tickets. So you'll need some ETH on there prior to migrating your node. Second, we're gonna migrate the node. And then third, we're going to launch the node. So uh, three steps today in this video, we'll be doing it live on a test node that I have, which is live on mainnet. And uh, we'll do this together. So let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is head over to bridge.arbitrum.io. And uh, this is the bridge used to migrate uh, tokens from layer one to layer two. Uh, this is where we're gonna be migrating our ETH. So we can go ahead and connect our MetaMask. And um, this is the Titan node test um, account that is uh, currently live on mainnet. Um, I'm not sure how much to send, um, but for this tutorial, just because this is, um, I'm not, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure how much it's going to cost to call reward, but we're just going to send uh, 0.05 ETH. And um, hopefully that will um, cover things and costs from uh, Arbitrum side. So we can go ahead and click deposit. And it says you're uh, about to deposit ETH from L1 to onto Arbitrum. This could take 10 minutes and you'll be credited um, uh, once it's on there. Moving your funds back to Ethereum layer one uh, will take one week. So just to let you know, if you do move ETH from uh, layer one to layer two, you can't get it back for uh, over a week or about a week. So only send the amount needed. I would recommend sending more than this, especially if this is your full node and especially if you're going to be calling reward daily. Uh, I don't think I'll be calling reward daily on this account, so I'm just sending a small amount uh, for this tutorial. So we can hit deposit. And you can see MetaMask has now prompted us to do this. Now, this fee itself um, is a layer one fee. So um, I'm going to be sending about $146. And the fee is $20, uh, $27 to send, right? Um, so it's quite quite expensive. Um, but we'll go ahead and confirm that and uh, let it process. Um, so it says, uh, it says here estimated time of arrival is about uh, 2 minutes 55 seconds. Um, I will let that um, complete and then we will come back. Okay, so we waited for the two transactions to complete. The first was this deposit and then the second was a 10 minute waiting period uh, for it to be, I guess, approved onto uh, Arbitrum layer two. So I'm sure if we look at the transaction history for Arbitrum, uh, you can see right here that uh, it is confirmed and it's in our Arbitrum uh, layer two account. So this has been successfully moved over and we now have our balance um, over in Arbitrum. So that was the success. Next, we'll move on to migrating the node. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is visit the Explorer, explorer.livepeer.org. And you can see that we have now updated the Explorer to reflect the uh, Arbitrum uh, network. So obviously if delegators or people want to come look at the Explorer, they're going to switch to Arbitrum here, which will change over our MetaMask. Uh, because we are migrating um, and we run an orchestrator, we can use the L2 migration tool. It prompts us right here. Um, it should also be down at the uh, bottom, but uh, we'll just go ahead and click this. It's right there in case you need it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and um, we've already connected our uh, mainnet account. So this is our Ethereum mainnet and we already have um, this set up. So this is the migration tool and we can see we have all our details. We can go ahead and hit approve migration. If we just wait a couple seconds, um, obviously you have to have your MetaMask account uh, imported in here. Um, the gas is going to be about uh, $80, but we can go ahead and uh, change that in this case. We're just going to decrease this to about 70. Um, might take a bit longer, but that's okay. For this tutorial, we'll save a few a few dollars in gas because we'll need 0.3 uh, 
uh, to do it, and uh, we have about 0.6. So we can go ahead and uh, click OK. I don't know why. Yes, gas limit 70. Okay. So we can hit, hit confirm, and we will wait for that transaction to confirm and come back later. Okay, so now you can see that our account has been uh, migrated and we are now over onto Arbitrum. Now, obviously, we have to switch to Arbitrum uh, in MetaMask in order to um, interact with it. So we can go ahead and approve and switch. And you can see that now here is our account and um, actually everything's been pulled over nicely, which is nice. This is the Titan node test. Um, as well as um, our delegated stake. And this is where uh, we can have people interact with our node again. So that was successful. Now the next step is going to be activating our node and running it. As you can see, our status is inactive. Um, that's because it's uh, currently not running and we need to go ahead and launch our node. So um, I'm gonna get this ready and we will come back in a sec. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need is a URL endpoint for our node, uh, for our Arbitrum node. So um, in this case, we're going to use Alchemy as our endpoint. So we're going to go alchemy.com, alchemy.com. And um, from here, Alchemy currently um, allows a free service for a um, Arbitrum endpoint, um, whereas um, uh, Infura allows one, but it doesn't allow very many um, uh, interactions per day. Uh, might not be enough, as well as you probably have to pay for it. So anyway, I've I've created a brand new account here. So once you log in, you'll see this. Um, so we're gonna create um, an al al uh, uh, endpoint using um, Alchemy. Uh, we can just call this uh, Titan Node uh, Test and Titan node test again. And um, instead of mainnet, we are going to be scrolling down and picking the Arbitrum mainnet um, account. We can go ahead and create our app. As you can see, we get 300 million uh, UC CUs per month, um, which comes up to about 10 million a day, which should be enough, I believe, for, for um, uh, live here. Um, it'll ask you for an, for an extra a million a day. You can put in a credit card. We'll skip that for now. And we'll just go with our capped capacity um, for Alchemy. Um, uh, how did I hear about? Uh, oh, we've heard about Alchemy before. Um, okay, so this is loading and now we have um, our endpoint. Um, should be right here. Okay, so we can go ahead and click and get our key. Obviously, um, as soon as um, this tutorial is out, you won't be able to use this key. I'll deactivate it, but uh, so we're gonna need this key so we can go ahead and copy that into a notepad and uh, save that for later. Okay, now let's go ahead to our node and launch it. Okay, so now we're gonna get to the part where we now launch our node. Um, this is our launch file, our launch script. Um, and we're going to make a couple adjustments so that we can launch our node onto Arbitrum. The first thing we're going to change in our launch script is the network flag. Um, the network flag needs to be set to Arbitrum dash one dash mainnet. Okay. So right now our old, um, our old command used to just be mainnet, but now we're switching to Arbitrum. So we have to change the network flag to Arbitrum one mainnet. The second thing we're going to do is change the ETH URL. Uh, the ETH URL, this used to point to our Ethereum node. Uh, now it's got to point to our Arbitrum node. Uh, so this is the URL we got from Alchemy uh, just in the last step. Okay. So those are the only two changes we're going to make, which is just the network flag and the ETH URL. Everything else can pretty much stay the same, whatever your uh, configurations were. So in this case, we got orchestrator, transcoder, price per pixel our service address and, uh, and some other custom commands. So uh, make sure we have our launch script ready with those two upgrades. Uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to quickly do a dry run and uh, create the folders needed. So under LP data, 
which is um, under your user account, you'll see that we have a mainnet um, account, uh, our off chain, and a rink B. Uh, most of you won't have this rink B unless you've done testnet stuff. Um, so you'll probably see these two. What we need to do is create the new folder for the Arbitrum uh, one network. The easiest way to do that is actually just to do a dry run. I just want to deposit right here real quick. Make sure you upgrade to the latest version of LivePeer. Otherwise, you're going to get a lot of errors when you try to run your note, and it will be very confusing. So if you haven't updated your LivePeer uh, actual program, uh, it won't launch correctly. So make sure it's updated before doing this. So we can launch our node. And what it'll do is it'll go ahead and launch the node, but it'll ask uh, that we create a new account because we don't have one in there yet. Um, so we can just create a random account, um, which will uh, generate new keys and a new key store file um, for a random account. But the nice thing is um, what this does is if we go back to our LP data, we now have this Arbitrum one mainnet folder. Um, and then this is where we're going to put our old key store into this new spot. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and close down this node, uh, this Arbitrum node. And we're going to go into the mainnet folder, uh, into key store. And you're going to say we have the key store for our ETH address uh, for mainnet. Okay. So this one ends in AE1. So this is our uh, account that we have on um, our mainnet explorer. Uh, this is the ETH account used for uh, calling reward and, and all these kind of things. So if we head back uh, to LP data, we can now head into the Arbitrum one mainnet and into the key store folder. Now, this is the random account that was created. We can go ahead and delete that and we can go ahead and paste uh, our old address in here. Okay, so Arbitrum uses the same key as the Ethereum network. Okay, so we now have that updated. So if we head back to our, our script to run, we can go ahead and run it. You can see that it is loaded up the proper account now because it's the only account in there. Uh, we can put in our passphrase. Okay, and now we are loading up our account and we are live. Okay, so we are now received a ping request. Our node is live. Um, however, it is still inactive. Okay, so the next step is actually going to be to launch our client, which is going to be here and run a couple of commands. Now what we have to do is update our orchestrator on chain information because when we move over our orchestrator, it doesn't bring our on-chain data with it. So we need to update the Arbitrum chain with uh, the information of our orchestrator. So the first thing we do is we set number 13 here, set orchestrator config. So we can go ahead and hit 13. And uh, this will run us through the commands for setting this up. So we can set our reward cut and our fee cuts. Uh, in this case, I'll just keep it the same which is zero and 100. Uh, it'll ask the amount of pixels that make up a unit, set that to one and um, 800 uh, GUI per pixel. And in this case, um, we will set um, the address of where we want the streams to go. And if we head back to the node while it's submitting those transactions, you can see that it is here now setting the price per pixel and it says right here, storing service URI um, as the registry, and it sets the service URI uh, as a transaction on RinkB. Once this uh, transaction goes through, we will come back in a second. Okay, so now the transaction got submitted, and what you can see here, it says for me, error applying configuration. That tends to happen to me uh, every once in a while. I don't know why I get that error, but if we hit uh, number one, uh, get node status. You can see that we are now registered and we are waiting for the next round in order to be active. It is currently uh, active is false and the status is pending, um, but we should be receiving streams very shortly. So your node is now live and ready to receive work. That concludes the end of this tutorial. Thank you for watching.